Hello everyone, uh, welcome to something new. Uh, this is Alpha Aries here, uh, gonna be trying something a bit different um, here. This is gonna be my first ever kind of like let's play series, uh, first ever kind of, you know, doing, playing games and recording them off stream. So I figured what better way than to play a game that I've really fallen in love with here lately. Um, yes, I know the game came out a while ago, and I've actually owned it since it launched, but I uh, just now got around to getting into it. So we're going to be playing some Frostpunk. We're going to be doing um, Endless Mode, kind of just a balanced mode here. Build our, you know, try and build our city, try and survive, and uh, see how far we can go. I'll go ahead and get it fired up here. But what I want to do is I want to start making some of these videos to showcase some of the other games that I play that I don't necessarily get to stream. Uh, live so that's what I'm doing here I think I'll try and make you know five or six episodes of this and just see uh, how it's received see how it goes kind of see what the reception is and then go from there so if you're not familiar with Frostpunk um, it's very much an RTS uh, city building survival type game so we'll just hop right into it we have our generator here uh, in the middle New Cambridge oh we need to we need to change this name uh, we need to be let's go with Alpha Town. <laughs> Alpha Town, if I could spell. That'll work. Seems like a good name. So we've got our generator. We've got our people. So we've got 105 homeless people. That's great. Good way to start. Uh, somewhat mild temperatures, negative four. So the first thing we want to do is we do want to get uh, people out here to gather uh, wood and coal, I believe, are the things we need right away. Uh, that's a coal pile. Let's get these people out here getting coal and wood. Gather as much as we can. Uh, hopefully get ourselves off the ground. Once we get uh, some more coal, I mean, we could go ahead and turn on the generator now, but once we get some coal coming in, we can turn on our giant uh, space heater, if you will, uh, which will give us uh, some heat and we can start uh, constructing things. We do have a good, decent amount of wood to start with. Um, so let's go ahead and get some uh, homes for our people here, which we get in the form of tents. Uh, later on, uh, through research and whatnot, we will be able to get some better things. Uh, I've played a couple, I'll say a couple, maybe five or six hours of the main story. So I do know the basics of the game and its mechanics. However, don't be surprised if I make some mistakes along the way, as I am still very, very new to this game in general. But we'll go ahead and get some houses, get three homes up. I believe they house ten people apiece. So we're going to need at least eleven homes to house everyone. So... That's going to be a bit tricky here to start. We also want to make sure we try and keep the homes as close to the generator as possible at the beginning until we get access to more advanced heating technologies uh, because if the temperature drops, which it looks like it's going to uh, here in a couple game days, uh, if these houses were, say, out here in this ring, they would not get enough heat and people would freeze to death. So we don't want that. Definitely don't want that. We've still got some idle people, so let's get... It's working. It looks like they're engineers, so we'll have to... I usually try to keep the engineers for the buildings that require the engineers. Yeah, you have your workers, which are manual labor, and then you have your engineers, which are more intelligent, I guess you would say. They can do more complex jobs like medical, uh, you know, your, your medical buildings and your research factories and things like that. Uh, we also have a book of laws here we need to go down. Um... I guess let's start with adaptation first because that's going to be uh, how to, you know, help keep our people alive. Uh, let's see. I think we need to go ahead and get the child shelters because we do have a bunch of children. So we've got, we, we can, how do we want to do this? Do we want to be an asshole <laughs> or do we not? Um, basically, we can. Uh, we've got two choices for this law. We can do child labor safe jobs. So uh, basically, uh, we put the children to work in quote-unquote safe workplaces like cook houses or hot houses. Right? And then how it starts, yeah, we'll give you a safe job. And then a year later, they're all working in the shoe factory or something. Uh, or we can do child shelters where children will be safer if they stay in shelters because they won't cause any mischief. Um, so you can see the different pros and cons to each one here. Children will work. Um, but people aren't really happy about it. The child can, you know, children can get injured and hope will fall. Um, we've, all, we've also, uh, on this choice, we have a lot more positives. So basically the only negative is we have to build the shelter, um, which takes resources, which is why it, I guess it's red. But this looks like the better choice. Um, 
we get you know hope will rise children will have a place to stay and eventually it looks like we'll be able to have the children uh looks like a, be an apprentice um which i think will help our research later on so let's go ahead and sign that into law uh, and every time you do a law uh there is a cooldown on it so you can't just like you know pick a whole bunch of laws there is some cooldown on that so we've got a law we've got a few houses up and running uh, we've got everyone out gathering resources here. Um, oh, we have a goal. Survive the first storm, which looks like it comes in 14 days. I've not actually experienced that yet in the single player, the blizzards, I believe. I've had crazy cold temperatures, but not uh, an actual storm. Unless that's the same thing. We'll find out. <laughs> um, but it looks like we still need some more homes. So let's go ahead and get that up and running. We also can build the child shelter, which if you'll notice, the child shelter has a base heating level of two, which means we can put it on the second ring and it'll still have uh, heat. Uh, speaking of heat, we can go ahead and flip uh, you on. I would like to say thank you. There we go. So now we've got heat. You can turn on the heat map so you'll see these houses are livable. Now with the, the rising and falling temperatures, uh, this status you know will change. That's one of the big mechanics of this game is keeping an eye on your heat and comfort levels yes um so pretty neat so we've got the heat on uh we need some more tents and we need the child shelter which we can build in level two uh so where do we want to put the child shelter i guess is the question let's go ahead and build uh get a little street here you do have to connect everything with streets i do love the way this game does its approach to grid building you know most grid you know you think of like ano 1800 or you know any of the ano games really and then some of the other city builders where it's, you know, on grids and it snaps to grids. Well, this is a grid, but it's not traditional. It's in the shape of a circle because um, obviously your heater is in the middle. So everything builds out, but in a circle pattern. Um, and it's really neat how you build the streets and connect everything and, and how you have to manage your space and whatnot. I really do like that about this game. So it's, it's a lot of fun trying to manage, especially once you get access to more and more buildings, trying to figure out where to put it and make sure it has enough heat and isn't you know taking up a bunch of space that could be used for say shelter or something like that so it is it is neat i really do enjoy the depth to it um looks like this work day is coming to a close and we've got a good chunk of coal and wood so i will take that as a success let's go ahead and get the child shelter built so you see what i mean so we can put the child shelter here which will get some of the kids we've got looks like 15 kids so that'll take the kids off the streets, and then we need some more base homes uh, so we can go ahead and get the tents up. Uh, looks like, I tr you know, try to try to plan ahead a little bit, too, where, you know, you want to have most of your houses, I guess, in one spot, like a district. That way you can control and maintain the heat a bit easier. Um, so I think we'll try and do that. We'll just go ahead and build the houses here. We're still going to be short. But I don't want to just make the whole ring houses because eventually when we need medical tents and stuff, uh, if we have to put those way out here, it really makes it difficult to keep them uh, heated and whatnot. So we'll see how it goes. We've got houses being built. The, the people are coming in from their work shifts. I also, I do need to get, I about messed up here, uh, food. We've got 80 raw food. But we need to convert that to actual edible food which is what this cookhouse does. And you'll see its base heating is one as well, which means it needs to be on the inner ring to uh, get the most benefit. So let's go ahead and throw the cookhouse down. What that'll do is that'll convert our raw food into rations. Uh, if you, if your people start starving and you don't have rations, you just have raw food, they'll start eating the raw food, which will satisfy the hunger, but also lead to illness, right? Because eating raw food is no bueno especially when the uh, world is a ice cream cone. Uh, child shelter is ready. Nice. So the child shelter is up and running. That should help uh, get the kids off the streets, right? Those pesky kids. Uh, we've got the cookhouse coming up. We will need to build a hunting cabin uh, here as well. I think, I'll, but that one doesn't. Yeah, 20 base heat. So we can put that on the second ring. It actually fits... You see what I mean about the grid, having to plan ahead a little bit. So this this actually fits perfectly in between the child shelter and the street we built. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Once that's built, we can assign some more workers to the hunting uh, lodge here. What's it actually called? Hunter's Hut. H-H. It's like a frozen tundra pizza hut, I guess. I don't know. 
Anywho, we'll get that built, then we can send people out. So what they'll do is at night, when everyone else is sleeping, they will go out on hunting expeditions, bring back raw food, and then during the day when people go to work at the um, cookhouse, they will take that raw food, convert it to rations, and so forth. There are other options for food and whatnot later on as we get further into this, uh, but right now we're pretty basic. So we just want to try and start getting rations, uh, make sure we have an, uh, at least an income of food uh, lest we run out and everyone starves to death, which I did have that. <laughs> I had that happen in my when I when I first played the single player the first time around. Obviously, I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> and um, the first night I think I lost like twenty people died, and then like three days later we were out of food uh, and out of resources. It was not good, so we <laughs> we had to restart. But anywho, we've got looks like we've uh, we got enough people here. We need to take some people off of some of these other routes here so we don't need you see last time when I zoomed out it would let me okay so there we go 15 that's what I was looking for so we got 15 people on the wood another 15 on the wood and 15 on the coal I don't think we need 30 people gathering wood not yet anyways we'll take those people out put them into food gathering and then this is where I'm talking about we we could put workers here uh, I do still have five left over, so let's do that. So now our our cookhouse and our hunting, our hunter's hut, <laughs> double H. I wonder if uh, if you can upgrade it to a triple H and pedigree. Never mind. Horrible wrestling joke. Um, but yes, the hunter's hut and the cookhouse are staffed, ready to roll. So that's good. We've got plenty of coal coming in to power our heater. Uh, which is good so we need to I think the next thing we need to do we still have homeless uh, but the dilemma is do I fill in the rest of the circle with homes and then have to deal with it later or do we put the homes in the second row here and see if we can't get them heated I don't know if we'll be able to in time we've got a temperature drop here in a couple of days and then it's going to go right back up we might be able to survive it we need to get a, uh, I think it's called, yeah, a workshop. Oh, we can, it actually gave us these technologies right away. Well, that's interesting. In the single player, you had to research a Steam Hub. Well, this makes this easy. Er, I thought we were going to have to actually get this researched first. So now I can actually build a street, put a, a Steam Hub out here, we can do the houses. So that's what we're going to do then. That makes this decision a lot easier. Uh, let's see, how do we want to go about this? We'll get a road, a road, a street, like so, and then we can start making a second ring of houses. And we'll just kind of make this area here like our big housing district. I think that'll work. We'll see how that goes. Uh, da, da, da. So they're going to make the street. Once they start that, I think we can go ahead and tell it where we want the houses, right? Streets under construction. Okay. You can place it, but I don't want to place it wrong. Because uh, you cannot, there's no like, you know, pick up and move a building, obviously. So, you got to be careful where you place stuff because you, you can deconstruct it, but obviously you lose some materials doing that. So, try and be careful with where you're placing things. Uh, we'll be able to do another law here in a, a little bit. What else do we need? Uh, the medical tent, we'll need that soon. We've got our food up and running. So, it gave us pretty much, it looks like all of the technologies it looks like so I wonder what happens if we build a workshop if there's anything for us to even research or did it just give us everything right away it looks like it might have because we've got all kinds of things that I've not seen before <laughs> including like decorations and whatnot so we'll have to check on that that'd be kind of I don't know how I feel about that if you don't have to research anything in endless mode we'll see all right, people are up and at them. We've got our road. I keep calling them roads. We've got... Well, no, we have to have research because we don't have access to the bunkhouse or anything else. So we'll get that workshop up and see what's what. But let me go and get these houses up here so we can get these <laughs> these poor homeless people um, somewhere to live. Looks like we needed five, right? I think I can get two right here, yeah? Yep. And then we need the... Uh, what's it called? The steam hub. Which we're gonna have to have two of them. We're gonna have to get one right here, so we can we can build a street, put that one right here, and then we'll put the other one right here. I think that will will cover this area, and that should help whenever the uh, storms come as well. 
But you see like how it automatically snaps into the circular grid? I love that. I don't know why. I just find that really neat. Maybe because it's just unique and there's not many games that if I don't know if there's off the top of my head any other games that are like that that do the grid like this. I, I really like how it all comes together. I can see why this game got so much praise. All right, so we've got another work day starting, so people are going to head out, gather from these huts. I say huts, these piles. We are going to need to get a more permanent method of gathering, though, because these are not infinite. They do run out. Actually, this wood crate pile is almost gone. I'm assuming this coal, the coal up here is actually probably close. Well, it's got 300. But we will need to build some mines and, like, sawmills uh, eventually to uh, get some more resources in here. How far out does this go? Good lord. So I wonder how far down we can build. I wonder if it'll show me where... We could, it looks like we can build pretty far out here. This is the way our... Eventually we can build scouts and go out and look for things, which will be nice. Alright. So they're constructing homes for the homeless. Yet yeah, we've got sick people. People are sick! <laughs> Quit getting sick. I'm doing my best. Uh, go ahead and build. I guess we'll start the medical wing there. Seems like a good place for it. So you've got a lot of stuff under construction here. Hopefully this will all be done before this temperature drop. Because uh, then, if you see right here, it's comfortable. So when that temperature drops, it's going to knock this down a notch. Which will still be livable, so it's not that big of a deal. But there are times when this temperature will drop two or three levels at a time. <laughs> and that's when it gets really questionable. <laughs> uh, and it will test your infrastructure. Because if that temperature drops and you don't have a way to heat your homes and whatnot, you will uh, suffer the consequences. Either by, like frostbite or people freezing to death or what have you. Alright, so let's get our steam hub. Since I built our street, we can get one here. Here, that covers, uh, how close do we need, so we put one there, and then I believe right here should overlap, but I can't see the grid on the steam hub until it's done. Once it's finished building, I'll be able to see that circle, because I, I want to make sure they overlap, we don't miss a home here. The good news is we've almost got everyone a place to live. <laughs> is kind of important uh we need to oh i for, almost forgot we have another law we can do we also have purpose um which is kind of like uh not more like a dictatorship a thotor uh, yeah i can't even say that word today um but it's like strict laws and propaganda and whatnot it's a very hard-ass way of controlling your people i don't know if we need that right now if things get you know hectic with people losing hope and whatnot we can start enacting some of these policies to keep them in line but right now we want to find you know find ways to battle hunger sickness and whatnot so i think we'll stay in the adapt adaptation god english today is hard the adaptation tree uh so this is what i was talking about with the children so we can either have them become engineer apprentices which will help with our research of new designs or we can have them learn medicine which will help with the sick um it's kind of a tough choice you can either you know obviously the research benefits you but at the same time being able to get people in and out of the infirmary quicker is nice as well in my single player uh endeavor i was having a lot of people getting kind of backlogged into the hospitals because it was taking so long for them to get well so i think we might in this playthrough let's send them let's have them become medic apprentices i think Let's try that and just see how much of a difference it might make once we get our medical stuff up and running. So we've got, we only have five homeless people left, so one more house will take care of them. Uh, let's just go ahead and throw that right there. So this works out nice. We've got a nice little housing district here uh, coming together. We're going to get another steam hub right here. And we should have all that done in time for this temperature drop. Uh oh, what's this now? A note of thanks. We just wanted to thank you. Back in London, it was only the wealthy that didn't have to send their kids to work. <laughs> uh, in this new world you're creating, we can see things will be different. That's right. It's the right thing to do. That's right. I am not a 
you know, heartless bastard. <laughs> uh, so, all right, looks like we're up and right. We're going to need, like I said, a more sustainable resource collection method. And a lot of these resources are really far away, too. Look how far away these are from the city. This will become a problem if the temperature drops really far and you're having to send people out here to get to the stuff because it's so cold out here away from the heat. They will freeze to death out here. So we, we, we want to keep an eye on our temps. Uh, eventually we can build some, like, mining facilities. We actually have the, the uh, technology for it now. All right, so that's built. So let's get the other one up and make sure it overlaps. So you can see the circle kind of where it is. So it looks like we want to put it right here. So that'll get the rest of these houses and I think it will touch the children's shelter as well. So that's good. I like how it melts the snow. That's a really cool touch. It's a really neat feature. Like I said, this game has a lot of a lot of things going for it. I really do enjoy it so far. And I'm really mad at myself for not playing it sooner. Like I said, I, I bought it the like the day it came out and I guess I got caught up in other things and it kind of just sat in my Steam library until the other day and I was like you know what I've been wanting to start a city building RTS like let's play series for a long time let's start with this because this is you know I have not put very much time into it so I'm kind of learning as we go as well so let's have you know I figured why not let's give it a whirl do something different change it up mix it up Wood crate depleted. Uh oh. That's okay. We got some more wood right there, a little bit further out. So we'll put those same 15 people back to the wood gathering. We're actually almost maxed on coal. Oh, it's because I've got two two people gathering coal. Okay. We're going to need some steel. Let me take off. These guys quit gathering coal. We've got, we've got plenty of coal. Let's go ahead and start gathering the steel. We're going to need the steel for more advanced facilities later on, um, especially some of your factory and your mechanical uh, steamworks buildings, so we will need the steel. Alright, so we've just got the three people that are sick, we've got the hospital up and running, uh, but we needed to staff it. So that's where the engineers come in handy, I was mentioning earlier that only engineers can operate this building, not your workers, so try to keep your engineers available for special things like this. So now that the medical post is up and running. You'll see the sick people disappeared, and that is because they are patients inside the medical post. So hopefully they'll get treated and back to work in no time. All right, so we've got... Let's see, how are we doing with our food intake? You can actually look at all this stuff too, which is nice. So if we go down to food processing, looks like we're gaining... So we're getting 15... Yeah, so we're we're consuming 105 food. Oh god, we need we definitely need more food then. So we're gonna need. I'm not sure how we're gonna pull this off because we don't have the technology for. I need more people basically to then hunt. <laughs> but the problem with getting more people is it creates more mouths to feed. I need the beacon. This right here will let us send out scouting parties to find resources and other people to come to the colony. I don't think this has a heat requirement. Right, so we can, I mean, theoretically, we could plop this beacon way off in no man's land as to not take up any space from the main town, but I don't want to block any of these resource nodes We'll destroy some resources. We don't want to do that. I guess we could put it kind of like back here, maybe. Yeah, if we put it somewhere like right here, because it looks like that's in line with this grid. So we'll get a street out here and we'll get the beacon up, and then we can see if we can get some uh, scouts out and about. I also need to build a, the workshop. Uh, let's go ahead and do that, actually. That's got a, a heat level of 2, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, yeah, so that can go on the second ring as well. Which I think we can just... Because we can build more than one. So we can put our, our factories kind of... We can get, looks like, two or three factories right here. Let's go ahead and throw one down there. That will allow us to start researching technologies, which will help us, I believe, in the long run. All right. 
I think that's a good start. I think that's a good start. So once we get that up and running, we'll need to get a street out here, get the beacon, and start seeing if we can get some more resources in a way to get more food intake. I think that'll be fun. All right. Well, I think that'll be a good a good way to stop this first episode. Again, I'm learning how to do this as we go, so hopefully you can bear with me um, through the next few episodes, and hopefully you enjoy this, uh, and we can um, make it a more common thing. Uh, let me, definitely let me know what you think in the comments, if you would be so kind, if this is something you want to see more of. I'm going to go ahead and, and probably do, like I said, four or five episodes of this game and just see what the reception's like. Uh, so if you're interested in, in me playing more games like this, you know, we could do Anno, obviously Frostpunk, there's, you know, Dawn of Man. There's a bunch of city building survival type games that I love to play, uh, RTS type games that I love to play, that I would love to do these type of videos. So definitely let me know uh, what you think about it and if you want to see more. But that's going to be all for this episode. Hopefully you have a great rest of your day and thank you.